Hey everybody, today I'm out in Arizona taking a look at the recently refreshed 2024 Genesis G70. Let's take a look at the changes for 2024 so you can decide, do you want to put one of these in your garage or perhaps something like a Lexus IS or a BMW 3 Series? Style-wise, the G70 hasn't changed too much, of course, because this is a refresh. It's actually the second refresh that the G70 has received. That's likely because sedans don't sell terribly well in the US, but Genesis is still really committed to this segment and this format. We have the distinctive Genesis split headlight design here, the big Superman grill up front. It really is enormous. Radar sensor right there in the middle, and of course, the winged Genesis logo. One big reason to get the Genesis G70 over the Acura TLX, which is also recently refreshed, is that this is a rear-wheel drive luxury sedan. You can get it rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. We're going to take a look at the all-wheel drive model first, and that certainly means different proportions, especially from that Acura or the Volvo S60. So much shorter front overhang, longer dash to axle ratio, this very classic rear-wheel drive profile. I think that this design has aged incredibly well since the G70 is launched, but let me know what you think of that down there. Another big change, we get different tires and wheels, of course. We also get the Brembo brakes standard now in the G70. Part of that is because Genesis is going after a more premium, more sporty customer with a new base engine, and partially because that's the customer that seems to still be interested in a sedan. Out back, we get a slightly refreshed tail design, split tail lights, just like the rest of the Genesis lineup as well, well-integrated parking sensors, and the backup lights are now down here at the bottom of the bumper. But in case you're wondering, the turn signals are still up here in the regular module. Hyundai and Genesis have really been moving the bar down on the headlight and taillight game, really moving those lamps lower on the body. Let me know what you think of that style. I definitely like the well-integrated exhaust tips and exhaust gas is actually flowing out of those because they are real tips, not like the fake ones that we find in some modern Audis. Now it's time to check out under the hood. We have the same 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 under here available that we found last year in the G70 producing the same 365 horsepower. You will get a very modest power bump if you get the optional performance exhaust. You get about three extra horsepower, but performance is gonna be basically the same between this year and last year. The bigger change is the base engine. The two liter turbo is gone. We now have the two and a half liter turbo borrowed out of other Genesis models. This is now gonna give you 300 horsepower standard, making this one of the most powerful base engines in the segment. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit later in the video, but if you were interested in the G70 before, you didn't wanna spend quite as much as some of the competitors, but you wanted more oomph, you definitely wanna take a look at that model because it's gonna start at around $41,500, certainly making that one of the better performance options in this segment. Let's give the interior just a quick look. Obviously, this is a compact luxury sedan, so roominess is gonna be pretty similar to the German competition. We have a powered tilt telescopic steering column there, multi-way adjustable driver's seat. This is definitely one advantage to the Genesis over the Lexus is that we have a more adjustable and more comfortable driver's seat available. I'll go ahead and adjust this to uh, my preferences at six feet tall here. And then let's hop into the back and see how this works. Again, keep in mind it is a compact sedan. So uh, back here, we definitely find compact dimensions. I do think that the back seats in the BMW 3 Series are a bit roomier. Check out that amount of legroom there. It's not too bad. It actually feels pretty similar to the Acura TLX and the Lexus IS. Uh, if I wanted to move over here to the right side, let's try and kick off my shoes, see if we can make this happen. The front seat's all the way back in its tracks. And, you know, I, uh, I suppose I could do this. Definitely not going to be comfortable, but I could always squish the front seat passenger by uh, moving that up on them while they're sitting in there. The trunk, well, we have a powered trunk lid right there and a cargo area that yet again is pretty similar to the rest of the compact luxury competition. Here's a 22 inch roller bag. You can see you could definitely stack a few of those in there, but in that position, maybe you could fit three, perhaps four in the trunk. If you want more space, you're gonna have to get the G80. And that's probably the biggest difference worth mentioning is that Genesis offers three different luxury vehicles to choose from in this sedan segment. They have the small one, the mid-sized one, and the big one, and that's something we don't find from Lexus or Acura anymore. Interior changes are pretty modest for this year. You can see that we have the upgraded leather upholstery in this model with quilting on the seat backs, some contrasting stitching, that quilted insert carries over to the front doors, which definitely dresses them up more than we find in a Lexus IS, for instance. 
A lot of the trim in here is the same as before. So this sort of silvery trim, that's basically the same, but we do get different textures to the other trim panels on the interior, for instance, around that speaker grill. We do have lots of premium materials on the dashboard. We have a soft touch upper injection molded dash that has been after stitched. We then have this stitched imitation leather section of the dashboard, which also dresses things up. And then in the middle of everything, we have the same color touchscreen infotainment system we've seen for a while from Genesis. Two big air vents just below that and then some new touch controls for the climate control system. I like the fact that Genesis gives us some physical controls as well. So the temperature is a physical control. We also get real buttons for things like the auto mode there, but the air coming out, the seat heating and ventilation, those are all touch. And then we get a lot of physical controls for the infotainment still. So they haven't, uh, haven't completely abandoned all those physical controls. As you can see, we have decently sized cup holders down here, easily able to accommodate some of those larger drinks the joystick style shifter. They haven't given us a knob or anything like that. Drive mode selector and a reasonably sized storage compartment behind. Keep in mind, this is a rear wheel drive vehicle, so there is a transmission under there. On the driver's side of the dash, we have a full color heads up display and we have a partial LCD instrument cluster. This is one thing that I wish Genesis would have changed uh, because we don't find the full LCD cluster that we find in some of the other Genesis models even available regardless of the cost. You can see that this is still a physical dial over here for the speedometer, but the other portion of the display is that LCD. On the other hand, we have perhaps one of the best steering wheels, I think, in this segment. It certainly has an attractive and premium feel with the stitched leather airbag cover. A lot of models, even much more expensive Volvos, just give you a hard plastic airbag cover, which I always thought was a little weird. The steering wheel, it's not as thickly rimmed as some, but I found it pretty comfortable. We have paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel, buttons on the front over here for the adaptive cruise control system that is standard, and then the infotainment system over there on the right. Out of the road, you're probably going to notice less of a difference in the twin turbo V6 model because less has changed. This is the same 3.3 liter V6 engine that we had before, producing the same 365 horsepower. But I think you will notice the difference likely in terms of the power output between the base version and this version, because now the base model has gone all the way up to 300 horsepower. And that means that in some ways the twin turbo six is going to be a little bit less special. I was actually surprised that Genesis did not try and transplant their newer three and a half liter twin turbo V6 under the hood, because that really would have cranked the dial up a little bit further. Something that I've always loved about the G70 is certainly still here. It's the particular blend of attributes. Genesis has been known as being a relatively reliable brand, something that we generally associate with Lexus as well, but the base engine is smoother in this than it is in the Lexus. That Lexus 2.4 liter turbo, it's a little on the gruff side and it also doesn't produce that much power. 240 approximate horsepower versus 300 in the base G70. And then we have this 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 engine. 365 horsepower definitely makes it peppier than the base engine, although I would argue that it's also a little bit less special now because the base engine produces so much more power than it did before. There may be less reason for some folks to upgrade into the 3.3 liter twin turbo six. The steering feel in the G70 has never been quite as precise as the Lexus IS, but I do think it compares pretty well to the Germans. As far as the steering feel goes in this segment, I have to say Lexus has done it just about perfectly in the IS. Again, the problem for me has always been the lack of power that we find in the IS lineup, excluding, of course, the IS 500 F Sport. That's certainly a lot of fun, but it's also pretty thirsty, and you can't get all-wheel drive in that model. The rest of the IS also honestly feels really behind the times. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any official 0 to 60 or 60 to 0 stopping times for this vehicle, but expect it to be substantially similar to the last models that we tested. I expect that the 0 to 60 time in this V6 model is probably going to be around 4.2 seconds. I would expect the base engine to be just under 5 seconds, so fairly competitive with the competition and certainly ahead of other entry-level luxury sedans. Lexus ES, this is going to be more fun and faster. Volvo S60, this is certainly going to be more fun and faster. Although the S60's weird party trick has always been that plug-in hybrid system. It's one of the few hybrids that we find in this segment. You, I guess, could consider a Lexus ES hybrid in this segment, but it's a very different vehicle. 455 horsepower in that Volvo, wicked fast zero to 60, but the driving dynamics have always been a little funky. Most of the power happens on the front axle. It's the only entry in this segment where you can get torque steer and oversteer at the exact same time. And although that is peculiar and entertaining at some point, it's not as enjoyable as the dynamics that we find out of the G70. Alex, what about the Model 3? I mean, I know it's electric, but it kills in the segment, right? It's taken over mm -hmm. the ground from the 3 Series, 
and it seems to be the one that everybody now wants as opposed to all of the German and now Korean competitors. Well, hey there, Roman. So Roman hey. just magically appeared in my passenger seat, if anybody was wondering. Uh, you know, that is an interesting question that I get asked frequently. I would argue Model 3 does not factor into this segment necessarily because you have to decide you want to go electric. And then this is not a competitor to the Model 3, and Model 3 would not be a competitor to this. I would assume that there's going to be some small portion of overlap, someone that may actually be cross-shopping these two vehicles, but that is the biggest differentiator. One's going to be electric, one's going to be gas, and that is, you know, what some people are interested in, but clearly not enough to completely suck the air out of the room. I'm going to throw in a wild herring here. Why would you not cross-shop this with a one-year-old Stinger, which has the exact same powertrain, which has basically yeah. the same layout, and which is going to be $10,000 cheaper, and it's basically the same company, except it's got a Kia badge instead of a Genesis badge. Yeah, and I do love the Stinger. I do think that the dynamics of this are better than the Stinger. The Stinger's always had a little bit of weird rear-end lift uh, that kind of bugged me a little bit. I do love it. I love the practical hatch in the back. Uh, there, I would say it's all about the badge. I mean, are you buying the Genesis? Are you buying the Lexus? Uh, new car versus used car shopper, that's always tricky. Oh, we have another uh, another car just like coming out slow. <laughs> From Florida! Again. Oh, these are turning out. Yeah, this is, uh, that's pretty good acceleration. I like that. The acceleration has, it has a really good feel to it. And I will say that if we move it over to Sport Plus mode, bear in mind, we're not gonna be doing anything stupid because, you know, speed limits are not high here in Arizona, but it does have nice pull and nice gear shifts. I like the way the eight-speed automatic is tuned in here. The V6 engine has a nice sound in its most comfortable, quietest mode. It's, you know, that sounds a little bit gruffer than the Lexus V6 or the BMW inline six, but I think in a pleasing way. And then the exhaust note when it's in Sport Plus and opens up those valves kind of gives me some sort of uh, Infiniti G70, you know, or, uh, what, do they, what do they call that thing now? G37? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G60, G50, G uh, Q. Oh, Q. It's Q. It's a Q50 now. That's right. Not the G Wiz. All right. Here's Q50. A, here's a question that I think everybody's asking themselves: Would you buy this over a three series? And if so, why? I would buy it over the three series, and that's all down to the pricing, which we'll cover in just a bit. But would you buy it over a discounted Model Three? <sighs> Uh, now you're, now you're yeah, about, you know. then there's that electric versus versus gas question. I would say if excluding the electric versus gas, the ride quality in here is better than Model 3. The interior fit and finish is better than Model 3. The materials are better. There's an instrument cluster where I expect it to be. There are normal buttons on the steering wheel. I've got stocks for things. Um, I prefer that more traditional interface with the car, knob, knobs and switches and buttons and things. So that's the reason, main reason that I would get this over the Model 3. They both have very tiny back seats, so I think yeah. there, there's no difference. Model 3's back seat's definitely bigger than that. Yeah, this, and it has a much worse exhaust note. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> I, 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 I'm okay with quiet, though. I'm fine with quiet. What you probably all really want to know is what's the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine like? Honestly, a lot of fun, and a surprising amount of fun, I would say. You do get 65 less horsepower and 65 less pound-feet of torque, but you also get about 200 pounds less curb weight. The 2.5 liter turbo is definitely lighter weight on the front, something you'll really notice on a smaller autocross course like this. It's definitely a lot of fun. One thing I noticed about the 3.3 is that, yes, it sometimes feels a little bit heavy up front, but part of that's probably also the staggered tire setup. We have 225s up front, 255s in the rear. This 2.5 liter turbo model also has the same staggered tire setup, but with a different tire fitment. These are all season tires, not the Michelin Pilot Sport tires that we found on the 3.3 that I was driving earlier. Definitely a little bit less grip, but actually a lot more fun on a course like this. Now, in this model, which is the all-wheel drive version of the 2.5 liter turbo, we ran a preliminary 0-60 to 60 fastest time of 6.1 seconds. That seems pretty respectable. It is a little bit warmer out here than where I normally 0-60 to 60 test, but we are actually at sea level, apparently, out here in Arizona. So I would say if you don't really need the extra performance that we find out of the 3.3 liter turbo, you should definitely check out this two and a half liter model. Roman and I actually spent a reasonable amount of time at the autocross course, et cetera, in this model, and it certainly feels lighter up front. It's probably the biggest thing you'll notice out on a winding road or an autocross or just spirited driving on your favorite roads. 
The front end feels lighter because the engine isn't as heavy. Most of the weight difference happens right there up front. And if you really want that lightweight, chuckable feel, you're definitely gonna want to skip the all-wheel drive option. I really appreciate the fact that you can get all of the options in this two and a half liter turbo without checking the all-wheel drive option box. And then if you really wanted that extra traction, you could just say, yep, I want all-wheel drive and I'm willing to give up just a little bit of fun. This one does feel just a little bit heavier in the front than the regular rear wheel drive model, but I also think that's an acceptable trade-off for the extra traction. Fuel economy and pricing are certainly gonna be two big differences between this and the optional V6 engine. This is gonna give you about three miles per gallon better fuel economy, and it's going to cost about $8,000 less. So how much will it cost for you to put one of these in your driveway? Well, let me grab my handy pricing sheet and tell you, it is $41,500 for the rear wheel drive version. All wheel drive is available on every trim of G70. It's gonna be a $2,200 option. If you want this 3.3 liter twin turbo V6, that's gonna cost you a lot more, $49,950. Rear wheel drive again starting, all wheel drive is available. And if you get carried away with options, there's basically no way to get your G70 over around $60,000. That certainly makes this one of the more value oriented entries in this segment. And even more surprising than that, this is actually gonna be less expensive, generally speaking, than the Acura TLX. And I don't know about you, but I would rather have a Genesis G70 rear wheel drive than a TLX even with all wheel drive. This is simply more fun, it feels more engaging, it's more direct. The way that the drivetrain can apply the power is very, very different versus a front wheel drive based system in that Acura. We actually get about the same kind of rear seat room. Even though the Acura is bigger on the outside, this actually has about the same kind of space inside. So you really don't lose anything moving to this smaller format vehicle. In fact, you'll just gain the easier to park abilities of a smaller format. I would also buy this over the Lexus IS. The IS just feels a little bit dated and a little bit boring. I really wish Lexus would give it more of a significant refresh. The trickier questions are, would you buy the Genesis or would you buy the BMW? Would you buy this? Would you buy the Mercedes? That is an awful lot trickier. I really love the styling of the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. I think the interior is that next level in premium feel, but it's also next level in terms of its price tag. The BMW 340i is certainly also gonna give you better performance, but it's also gonna cost you more than this. Dealership experience, that is certainly a big part of luxury car shoppers' desires. And the Genesis model here does need a little bit of work. At the moment, there are only 11 dedicated Genesis stores in North America. They have several hundred planned, but at this point in time, there are just 11. So if you really want that dedicated dealership experience, you're gonna find that in the German competition. You won't find it in the Genesis competition at the moment. But I still think there's a lot really going on for this model, especially the base two and a half liter turbo trim. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below and stay tuned because hopefully I'll be able to have that two and a half liter turbo at home for a full week coming just as soon as possible. See all of you later.